Hey everyone, in this lesson I'm going to show you stalls and spins in Flight Simulator. If you haven't watched Lesson 3 Aerodynamics, I recommend you watch that first so you have a better idea of what I'm talking about. First off, I want to talk about how to recover from a stall. Remember that a stall happens when the wing exceeds the critical angle of attack. When that happens, the airflow separates from the wing and it stops producing lift, and then the plane starts to drop out of the sky. So when we recover from a stall, the first thing you want to do is add full power, and what that does is start building up airspeed and it provides some extra lift from the prop wash over the wings. Next, you want to lower the nose by pushing forward on the yoke. By lowering the nose, you're reducing the angle of attack and allowing the air to start flowing smoothly over the wing again so the wing can produce lift. Now, what often happens is that one wing will stall more than the other one and the plane will bank to one side or the other while it's stalling. The most important thing to remember here is to not use the ailerons. If you use ailerons to roll the plane level while the wing is stalled, it'll actually aggravate the stall and make the plane roll farther in that direction. So what we do want to do is use rudder to stop the bank. So if the plane stalls and banks left, you're going to use right rudder to stop the turn and vice versa. Okay, the first stall I'm going to show you guys is a power on stall. And this is basically a takeoff stall. Um, and any of you who've played Flight Simulator, I'm sure you've had this happen to you where you're climbing out and you try and climb too quickly and too steep and your airspeed bleeds off and you end up stalling the plane. So I'm going to show you what the stall looks like and how to recover from it. Sixty knots, I'm going to start pulling back on the yoke and lift off. Now I'm going to raise my pitch to about 10 degrees and you'll see my airspeed starts bleeding off pretty quickly at this point. Pretty soon we're going to get the stall warning horn. There it is. And there's the stall push forward. Use opposite rudder. And now start pulling back on the yoke once you've built up airspeed. Now I kind of used some aileron there and I shouldn't have done that. It should have been just rudder. So I'm going to show you the stall again and this time keep the ailerons neutral. So pitch up. Airspeed's bleeding off. Here comes the stall. Lower the nose. Rudder. Now start bringing the pitch back up and you can use ailerons to level the wings at this point in time. Alright, we're going to do one more of those. About 10 degrees. Airspeed's bleeding off. Here comes the stall. Lower the nose, full power, rudder, and a little bit of aileron now. And climb back up. Now, the next stall I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you what happens if you try and pull back on the yoke too soon after you've lowered the angle of attack. And what happens is that the plane is actually going to go into a secondary stall because you've lowered the angle of attack but you didn't keep it there long enough for your airspeed to build up and you pulled back too soon afterwards and you end up exceeding the critical angle of attack again. So once again pitching up, airspeed's bleeding off. There's a stall warning horn. As it stalls, lower the angle of attack but immediately pull back and the plane goes into it beginning stage of a spin, so we definitely don't want to do that. So the key here is to make sure you lower the angle of attack by pushing forward on the yoke, and then once you've built up a little airspeed, then start smoothly pulling back. And there's a fine line here, because if you push too far forward on the nose during the stall to recover, being that close to the ground, you could end up flying into the trees. 
but if you don't lower the nose enough or you pull back too quickly after you have lowered the nose and you end up going into a secondary stall and crashing into the trees as well. Um, so you want to lower the angle of attack just enough, um, get the air flowing over the wing, get your airspeed up, and then smoothly start pulling back. Okay, so the last stall I'm going to show you guys is a power off stall, and this is a landing configuration stall. I have a setup on a base leg to the runway. There it is right there. Off our left, flaps are in at 30 degrees. The power is at idle, and I'm going to overshoot the turn a little bit, um, go past it, and then uh, basically start trying to compensate for that as I'm coming into land and increase the bank and pull back on the nose, basically to try and tighten the turn and salvage the landing. Um, and then the plane's going to end up stalling. So recovery for this is the same as it is for a power on stall. The first thing you do, full power and lower the nose. Um, once you've done that, use opposite rudder to stop the bank if it started banking during the turn. And then once you've uh, established a climb again, start um, cleaning it up and bringing the flaps back up. All right, so here we go. It's going to overshoot a little start turning here's the stall full power lower the nose rudder come back up now start cleaning it up take the flaps up one notch at a time At this point in time, you wouldn't want to try and salvage the landing. You would just want to go around, come back around, and try it again. All right, the last thing I'm going to show you guys is spins. Uh, I use X-Plane 9 for all the videos I take because the aerodynamics are uh, noticeably better than they are in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Anyways, the recovery procedure is the same as it is for a stall. Um, when I enter the spin, I'm going to keep the yoke all the way back um, just to keep the plane in a stalled condition and it's going to spin. So to recover, just push forward on the yoke and use opposite rudder to stop the turn and then adjust the power accordingly. Um, so here we go on positive. I'm going to pull the power all the way to idle. Just start pitching up a little bit. And this first spin I'm going to do without using any rudder to help it into the spin. I'm just going to pull all the way back on the yoke. Here's the warning horn. And just pull all the way back and hold it there. And you'll see one wing stalls more than the other, and it starts to spin. Then to recover, push forward on the yoke, opposite rudder if you need it, and start pitching up again. Now notice my speed was really high, so I don't add power until about now start climbing back up because you don't want to overspeed the airplane. Alright, I'm going to do one more of those. This time I'm going to use a little bit of rudder. We'll use some left rudder to kick it into the spin and I'll hold the left rudder during the spin. Um, it pretty much will do the same thing though. So power back at idle, pitching up. right here all the way back, kicking some left rudder. And push forward on the yoke, opposite rudder. Power still at idle because my speed's high. Pitch up, now adding in full power. Well there you have it, there's stalls and spins in flight simulator. Uh, if there's anything that you guys would like to see me do in a future lesson or anything you want me to explain better in this video or any of the previous videos, please leave a comment below and let me know what you'd like to see. Uh, thanks for watching this video. You can find me on uh, facebook.com slash flight trajectory or visit my website www.flighttrajectory.com. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and we'll see you next time.